Can you believe that in the end of October of this year, it will be 45 years since the election of Cardinal Carol Wojtyła to the See of Peter, taking the name of Pope John Paul II. And you'll be pleased to know that not only was I not born then, I wasn't even a twinkle in my parents' eye then. So uh, you're welcome for that. Many of you may remember that time, the year of three popes well, with the passing of Pope Paul VI, and then the election of the smiling Pope, if you remember, Pope John Paul I, followed by his untimely death, only a matter of weeks later. And then the election of Pope John Paul II at the end of October 1978. During Pope John Paul II's very long pontificate, he he was one of the youngest popes, wasn't he? There was a repeated motif that he used. And this motif repeated from the very first mass of his inauguration. Something continues to be repeated and repeated and continue to be shared with the world throughout the course of that long pontificate. Here is the repeated motif and he uses, and this is the first homily, his inaugural uh, mass of his pontificate back in 1978. And he uses the motif not once or twice, but three times in a short space of time. Here it is. Brothers and sisters, do not be afraid to welcome Christ and accept his power. Do not be afraid. Open wide the doors for Christ. Do not be afraid. Christ knows what is in man. He alone knows it. Did you notice that repeated motif? Three times he uses that phrase, do not be afraid. And I'm sure that when he uttered um, those words in this inauguration homily all of those years ago, the start of his pontificate, I'm sure that the Holy Father would have had no idea how far and how deep those words would penetrate into his life, how profound they would become in framing and illustrating his time as Pope, of how those words, do not be afraid, would need to be able to uh, come to the surface of his life. And we only have to just give a sort of a cursory glance through his uh, pontificate timeline as Pope to see how those very words not only took root, but were actually brought to life in his ministry among us. We have the challenging and the subsequent dismantling of communism, of which the Holy Father played a key role at that time. There was, of course, his attempted assassination at one of the general audiences in May of 19. 81, and then his forgiveness of his attempted assassinator in prison. If you remember those famous pictures uh, at the time of him going into the cell of the person who tried to assassinate him and having that long conversation between the two of them. The Holy Father walked by our side, didn't he, and led us over the threshold of a new millennium. He was a witness of strength, of courage, of dignity even, even in the face of illness which he faced, particularly in that latter part of his life. And I'm sure that we all remember well, don't we, the very last uh, sighting of the Holy Father uh, just before he passed away when he was unable to speak and he appeared on the balcony and waved and let off a dove. Do not be afraid, then, was no sequence of empty words. Wasn't just a sort of a great slogan to sort of kick off the pontificate. He lived that gospel value by his life. 
and as, a, as he offers us an example then for us to imitate. It's famous fact, I, I, wonder, I don't know if you know this, that the phrase, do not be afraid, uh, appears in, in Scripture 365 times. So you get one for every day of the year. Both the first reading and the gospel this weekend remind us not to be afraid, that we have nothing to fear. For, the, for even uh, Jeremiah in that first reading says eloquently, for the Lord has delivered the soul of the needy from the hands of evil men. We speak a lot, don't we, about living out our baptismal calling. We speak a lot about discipleship, a lot about our apostolic vocation and what, what all of this stuff means, not only theoretically, but practically. And of course, the reality is that we don't live in a utopia, do we? We don't live in that perfect world unhindered from challenges. Our expression of faith to the public sphere isn't an easy ride. It's not like skipping through long grass uh, with, with a sort of wearing flares. We only have to open our eyes to see the challenges that the world presents around us. And I'm sure that each of us could give examples of the challenges of living out our Christian vocation in the world. We are going to be faced with challenges along the road of discipleship. We are going to be faced with those disparaging people and their hurtful and offensive words, not only to the faith that we possess, something so personal and so deep to us, but also in making the challenge to us as a person, personally, as in our character. Such persecution still continues. In the face of all of this, in the challenges that we face, Jesus encourages us to acquire hopefulness and acquired faithfulness. If anyone declares himself for me in the presence of men, I will declare myself for him in the presence of my Father in heaven. And don't we see with those words how the pontificate and the life of John Paul II truly come, came alive? Jesus walks with us. He comforts us and consoles us. Do not be afraid. Like the example of Pope John Paul II, we, have, we will have our moments in our own lives to show and to give testimony how Jesus has worked through us. We need not be afraid. Amen.